Good morning, grade 10, grade 10 Macedonia, Moab, and Nazareth. For today, I would like you to know something about preparing and mixing cocktails and non-alcoholic concoctions. This lesson contains the following types of beverages, different types of alcoholic beverages, components of wine production and wine production, storing, serving, and preserving wine. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to have gained the following competencies. 1. Identify the types of beverages. 2. Determine the classifications of alcoholic beverages according to ingredients used, processes, and characteristics. 3. Identify non-alcoholic beverages and mixers used as modifiers in accordance with the flavoring ingredients and process form. And 4. Apply appropriate mixing methods and procedures based on international standards. So, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng beverage? It is defined as a liquid other than water like tea, coffee, beer, or milk. And there are two types, the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic. Non-alcoholic beverages available in bars include water, soda and carbonated drinks, coffee, tea, fruit juices, and flavors. There are two types of mineral water. We have the still water or sparkling water. The water is the basis of all beverages, both non-alcoholic and alcoholic. And one of the most saleable water sold in bars and food outlets is the mineral water. A mineral water is a natural water that is tapped from a natural or drilled spring or well. Its mineral salt content gives its specific properties, which is claimed to be beneficial to health. It contains minerals like calcium, magnesium, sulfate bicarbonate and chlorine so aside from water we have soda and carbonated drinks it includes soft drinks either in bottle or in can soda and carbonated drinks are called soft drinks locally juices on the other hand are obtained from juice extract of fresh fruits they contain natural vitamins such as citric and malic acid. Some are made puree, others are concentrated. There are also those produced with artificial flavoring. So after juices, we have coffee. It is a drink prepared out of coffee beans. And the most common types of coffee beans are Arabica and Robusta. We also have flavors or soda or soft drinks examples are ginger ale bitter lemon tonic and club soda so to summarize ang mga non-alcoholic beverages na available sa bars ay water soda and carbonated drinks juices coffee and flavors how about the alcoholic beverages Saan ba nanggaling itong mga alcoholic beverages? Ito ay nanggaling din sa mga natural food products or items katulad ng grapes, grains like rice, barley, fruits, and sugar cane. How about the alcoholic beverages? An alcohol is a volatile, colorless liquid obtained through fermentation of a liquid containing sugar and starch base. An alcohol beverage is any potable or drinkable liquid containing ethyl alcohol. Merong pinakamababa as na 1.5% at meron namang pinakamataas na 95% by volume ang alcohol content. Ang alcoholic strength of an alcohol beverages is measured in proof. So, halimbawa, yung beer, it contains 4% to 11% by volume. 
yung mga table wines, katulad ng red wine, white wine, and rose wine, it contains 7% to 14%. Yung malaki ang proof, malaki ang percentage or alcoholic strength ay ang mga whiskey, gin, rum, and vodka. So, alcoholic beverages is consist of wine, distilled spirit, liquor, and beer. Alcoholic beverages are fermented from sugars in fruits, berries, grains, and other ingredients such as plant saps, tuber, honey, and milk and may be distilled to reduce its original liquid to a liquid greater with greater alcoholic strength. So, brandy. Ang brandy ay nanggaling siya sa fermented juice of ripe grapes, yung hinog na ubas, or other fruits. If it is made from other fruits, it is usually aged in wood set cork. So, makikita natin doon sa labels kung anong fruit siya nanggaling. And brandy is produced in many countries. So, ito ay nanggaling sa Dutch word na ang ibig sabihin ay burnt wine. So, inulit ko, ang brandy madalas ay gawa sa prutas and its variations, katulad ng grapes, pomes, and fruit brandy. At ang alcoholic content nito ay approximately 40 to 50%. How about a scotch? It is an alcoholic beverage available in wide range of distilled spirits. How about a rye? A rye is a form of distilled beverage from rye grain. So, gawa ito sa rye grain. Rye is also made with corn, rice, and malted barley. Good quality rye whiskey is made in Pennsylvania and Maryland and is frequently used in cocktails. How about rum? It is the only beverage made from authentic sugarcane. Rum is processed by pressing and fermenting sugarcane juice and is sometimes distilled and fermented for a long period of time. Another way of making rum is by fermenting leftover molasses by adding yeast. So yung molasses is a siyang a byproduct ng sugarcane. Nakukuha doon ito sa tubo, ang kulay nito ay malagkit para siyang tinunaw na brown sugar or caramel. How about beer? It is one of the most oldest form of fermented alcoholic beverages. A liquid mix called wort is prepared by combining yeast and malted cereal such as corn, rye, wheat, or barley. How about beer? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng beer? Sa English, ito ay beer, pero sa Spanish, ito ay cerveza. Beer is also known as malt beverage, malt, M-A-L-T, and is associated with different kinds. Nakikita nyo dyan, merong ale, fruit beer, lager, merong porter, merong stout. These are beverages made from water, malted grain, katulad ng barley, hops, and yeasts. So, yung ale, halimbawa, it is a type of beer brewed from malted barley mixed with a certain amount of yeast. Pag sinabi naman nating fruit beer, fruits like cherry, raspberry, and peach are commonly used to brew this type of beer. Kapag lager naman, ito ay German beer brewed and stored at low temperatures. And it is most widely brewed and consumed beer in the world. So, ang most widely brewed, ang pinakamaraming kinoconsume sa buong mundo ay yung tinatawag nating lager beer. How about a wine? A wine is usually made from crushed and pressed grapes which are naturally fermented after adding a certain kind of yeast. So, ang pagproduce nito ay pwedeng partial and or complete fermentation ng katas ng ubas. Halimbawa, kapag ka ang wine ay hindi nang galing sa ubas, 
kailangan nakaspecify yan. Yung name ng source o kaya yung fruit dapat specify. Halimbawa, kung ang wine ay gawa sa kasoy, ang tawag dito ay kasoy wine. Kung gawa naman sa coconut, edi coconut wine o kaya bignay wine. So, kung hindi nakaspecify, automatic ang wine ay gawa sa ubas. Meron tayong variety of uses ng wine. Una, it serves as a complement to a meal or dish. ba? Diba? Meron tayong after dinner drink or uh, merong wine that goes well with a certain dish. Number two, it adds flavor and aroma to a dish. It enhances the quality or taste of food that is being cooked. So, ang wine ay nilalagay din siya sa pagkain na niluluto. And of course, a wine toast highlights the celebration of an event. So, kung ang beer ay merong iba't ibang variety, ganun din ang wines. Meron niyang classification. Meron tayong tinatawag na still or natural wines. Meron tayong tinatawag na aromatic wines, fortified wines, at ano? Ano to? Sparkling wines. There are seven types of wines. We have red. Ito yung considered as the most classic wine. We have white wine. It is made from white grapes produced in Europe and other places like Australia, California, New Zealand, South Africa, and so on. A rose wine is a soft version of red wine with most of them actually produced from red grapes. How about a sparkling wine? It adds a hint of luxury to every good wine through its fizzy or bubbly texture. A champagne, on the other hand, is a luxurious drink and well-known product from France. And a fortified wine is a wine that is blended with liquor. How about dessert wine? They are sweet, sweet wines that must be sweeter than the dessert being eaten. So let us remember, kapag tinawag na still or natural wines, ito yung tinatawag nating table wines. They are called natural or still wine because they are produced out of natural fermentations. Grapes are squeezed and fermented naturally without anything added on it. So, yung still or natural wines are red wine, white wine, and rose wine. How about the components of wine? What are these all about? The components of wine provides clues about where the wine was grown, how it is made, and affect qualities such as taste and mouthfeel. So, the different components are the following. We have the acid, alcohol, sugar, tannin, water, yeast, and flavor. Now, let's talk about wine production. Red and white wine. Pareho naman sila na nanggaling sa grapes. Pero bakit may white at mayroong red? White wines are made by pressing out the juice from the grapes and fermenting only the juice. Whereas the red wine is made by the fermentation of grape juice, which often also contains the skin, pieces of the grapes, and sometimes the grapes and the skin, minsan nga may, may stem pa. So yung responsible sa red color ng wine, ay ang skin ng grapes. How about the sparkling wine? Its production is a complex process in the Champagne region of France. It undergoes second fermentation in the bottle which traps the carbon dioxide and gives it bubbles. Fortified wines. They have spirit added to them which is usually brandy. This production makes either sweet or dry wines. If the spirit is added during the fermentation, some residual sugar will remain in the wine, resulting in a port. 
if a spirit is added at the end of the fermentation, a dry sherry will be created. Ano naman yung sweet wine? Bakit naman siya tinawag na matamis? Yung grapes dito ay affected by botrytis cinerea or noble rot. Ang ibig sabihin ng noble rot, pinitas or hinarvest ang grapes na late in season. Yung hinog na hinog na siya. Yung tamis niya ang nagpo-produce ng sweet wine. Ito yung tinatawag nating deeply concentrated wines kasi mataas na yung sugar content. Moving on to storing, serving, and preserving wine. The ideal location for the storage of wine is a cool, dry, dark space. Katulad ng closet, yung compartment sa ilalim ng hagdanan, o kaya isang portion ng garahe na hindi siya natatamaan ng direct sunlight. Yung lesser ang vibration and maintains a steady temperature of 55 degrees to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Ang pagsaserve naman ng wine ay depende sa klase ng wine, yung tinatawag nating serving temperatures. Kapag white and sparkling wines, ito ay sineserve dapat ng chilled. Kung yan ay ilalagay mo sa ref, one hour before serving, dapat naka-refrigerate na. Pero kung kulang ka na sa oras, pwede mo siyang ilagay sa freezer, pero mga 30 minutes lang. O kaya naman, uh, meron kang bucket na punong-puno ng yelo, lalagay mo doon 15 minutes before serving. So, hindi rin maganda yung overchilled kasi naapektuhan yung wine's aroma and flavor. Ang sparkling wines naman ay dapat sineserve at a lower range of the scale and fuller bodied richer whites at the upper range. So, halimbawa, yung red wine dapat sineserve siya ng cool room temperature, yung 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit with lighter, fruitier reds at a lower range. So, mas mababa. Meron tayong tinatawag na uh, conditions na dinedictate base sa init or lamig ng araw. Halimbawa, yung mga summer, hot days, ang tawag natin, it is a good idea to slightly chill a full-bodied red to mitigate its alcoholic heat which is more evident when the ambient temperature is high. It is also advisable to serve especially rich white wine at close room temperature to ensure that its complex aromas and flavors are fully appreciated. So, kung nakikita nyo yung, yung wine dyan sa slide, nandyan yung mga degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, yung temperature na bagay na isineserve ang wine. How about extracting the cork? Meron tayong ginagamit na uh, procedure kung paano tatanggalin ang cork. Yung cork ay gawa siya sa bark ng oak tree. Pero sa ngayon, meron na tayong effective and inexpensive alternatives to cork. Pinapalitan na yan ng metal screw caps na kaya na siyang i-open kahit wala kang cork screw. So when it comes to glasswares, wine glasses are preferred to use when drinking wine, when consuming wine because the design of the glass helps you to see smell, and taste the wine best. At ang mga wine glasses, katulad ng napag-aralan natin last time, comes in different sizes, shape, and design. But it should be clear and unadorned. Walang masyadong design. Dapat clear. Bakit? Para makita mo yung color and clarity of the wine. Hindi rin siya dapat sobrang makapal para uh, yung contact nung kamay mo doon sa wine, di ba? Meron siyang long stem para 
hawakan mo yung glass without holding the bowl. Kasi pag hinahawakan ng kamay yung bowl, it raises the temperature of the liquid. How about preserving wine? Kapag ka ang wine ay inilabas, mas maganda kung mauubos, wala ka nang ipepreserve or itatago. Kapag mas kaunti yung naiwan sa bote, na yung natira, mas maraming air at faster at mas mabilis ang pag-oxidize ng wine, kaya mawawala yung kanyang freshness. So, kapag merong natira na white wine, dapat lagyan ulit ng cork at i-refrigerate. At para ma-maintain yung kanyang masarap na quality, dapat makonsume siya within 4 days. Pero yun namang red wines, nagde-degrade na yung quality niyan once opened after 48 hours. Ma-extend lang yung shelf life, I mean yung kanyang good quality kung ito naman ay ilalagay sa refrigerator and then bago mo naman siya iserve, dadalhin mo siya sa room temperature kasi nga ang red wine dapat ay room temperature when served. Now, we have wine serving temperature chart. Ang sparkling wine should be served ice cold. White wine should be served fridge cold. Red, light red should be served cool. O ito yung tinatawag nating rose wine. At ang rich red wine naman ay slightly cool. Or pwede rin naman ang room temperature. So, when extracting the wine cord, you need to use a corkscrew and that is an example of a corkscrew. So, ito naman yung guide when choosing the right wine glass. So, tandaan natin na kapag ka-champagne, meron tayong appropriate glassware. Ito yung tinatawag nating champagne saucer, yung uh, champagne flute, o kaya naman champagne tulip, yung tulip para sa champagne. Kapag naman white wine, andyan yung ating white wine glass and we also have red wine glass para sa red and rose wine. Ang unang miracle ni Jesus ay sa isang kasalan sa village ng Cana sa Galilee. Kaya kapag sinabi natin na wine, ang ibig sabihin nito ay fermented or non-fermented na grape juice. And the only way to determine the meaning is by examining the content. So, mas maganda, balikan natin yung miracle na yun at ano ba ang life lessons nito para sa ating lahat. So, to end this lesson, please allow me to read verses from Proverbs chapter 23, verses 31 to 32. And it says, Do not gaze at wine when it is red. When it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly, in the end, it bites like a snake and poison like a viper. I hope you're learning. For our written works and performance tasks, see you later inside our virtual classroom. This has been your teacher, Malu Obispo, saying thank you for your active participation. Stay well and safe always. Goodbye.